Berkshire Hathaway is the eighth largest public company in the world and is best known for its leadership under Warren Buffett. Since 1965, Berkshire has returned over 2.7 million percent in per share market value, absolutely crushing the total return of the S&P 500 in the same time frame, which was a measly 19,784 percent. It cannot be overstated how insane that difference is. As a conglomerate holding company, it owns businesses like Geico, Duracell, Dairy Queen, BNSF Railroad, and Fruit of the Loom, while having significant minority holdings in public companies like Apple, Bank of America, Coca-Cola, Kraft Heinz, and American Express. This is just scratching the surface of Berkshire's investments. Previously, I've discussed how Buffett rakes in more than $4 billion a year in dividend income. Although he loves collecting dividends, Berkshire has never paid out a dividend to shareholders. No soup for you! In this video, I'm going to explain why Buffett chooses not to pay out a dividend and whether Berkshire Hathaway could ever become a dividend paying stock in the future. My name is Zach and you should leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the video. Today, I'm going to explain the logic behind Berkshire's decision to not pay a dividend and theorize whether they will in the future. So why does Berkshire Hathaway not pay a dividend? Luckily, Warren himself has commented on the issue many times over the years. Let's see what he has to say. In terms of not paying dividends, we don't pay dividends because we think we can turn every dollar we retain into more than a dollar of market value. I mean, the only reason for us to keep your money is if it becomes worth more by us keeping it than it would be worth if we gave it to you. And if we can create more than a dollar of market value for every dollar we keep, uh, you're better off whether you want to take that dollar out by selling a little piece of your stock or whether you continue to leave it in. That's the test. If we come to the conclusion that we can't do that, and we could come to the conclusion sometime, then we should distribute it to you. The interesting thing is, we're in certain businesses, for example, Seize Candy being one, we don't have a way to intelligently use all of the money that Seize generates within the Seize Candy company. So if Seize were a standalone company, it would pay very large dividends. Not because it you know, just had some dividend pol paying policy, it would be simply because we wouldn't have a way of using, in this case, $30 million a year intelligently in expanding that business. The Buffalo News is the same way. We, we don't have a way of using money within that specific business intelligently to use the, the money that it generates. We hope that in the overall Berkshire Hathaway scheme of things, that we can intelligently use the money that the companies in aggregate uh, uh, generate for us. And we think so far we have, and we think the prospects are reasonably good that we can continue to do that. But dividend policy should really be determined by that criteria, also bearing in mind the possibilities of repurchase of stock, too. But they should be determined by whether a dollar left in the business is worth more than uh, to the shareholder than a dollar paid out. Can you imagine if the you know, pick any one of you here, and let's say the two of us were in a business together, you know, I was earning $100,000 a year. How would we decide whether to leave the 100000 each year? And we, it'd be exactly what we've talked about here. If we thought the 100000 would translate into a present value of more than 100000 by some action, we'd leave it in. And if it didn't, we'd take it out. You know, and uh, it doesn't seem to register generally. Uh, and incidentally, in our own case, we'll probably go too long uh, before we come to the conclusion that we're not really using it that effectively because there'll be a certain denial we'll go through and we'll say, well, that was just temporary last year. But, but that will that is our approach and we'll we'll do our best to apply it. Berkshire has never paid a dividend, as we all know, and consequently you had superior utilization of the extra cash. <coughs> now, if you extend that reasoning, could it also be a beneficial policy if Coca-Cola and Gillette stop paying dividends and utilize the cash in other ways? Well, it depends what they could use the 
how they would use, utilize the cash and what they could use it for. Those are more focused enterprises than Berkshire, at least in terms of products. And they, um, I think, I commend managements that have a wonderful business for utilizing cash in those wonderful businesses or in businesses that they understand and will also have wonderful economics and for getting the rest of the money back to the shareholders. So Coca-Cola in my book is doing exactly the right thing with its cash when it both, when A, <clears throat> it uses all the cash that it can effectively in the business to expand in new markets and all of that sort of thing. But then beyond that, it pays a dividend which re distributes cash to shareholders and then it repurchases shares in a big way which returns cash on a selective basis to shareholders but in a way that benefits all of them. So we, you will benefit from us not paying dividends just as long as we can use the every dollar we retain to produce more than a dollar of value and of market value over time. Whether we can continue doing that, you know, how long we can continue doing that, I can't promise you, but that is the, that's the yardstick by which the decision is made. <clears throat> and that is the yardstick, I think, by which Coca-Cola is making the decision too, and I think that they deserve great credit for exercising the discipline to quit when they uh, using cash when they run out of the opportunities to use it well and then to use it then to further deploy it advantageously by repurchasing shares. Um, I think uh, one of the things I admire about my friend Bill Gates, he's got four and a half billion of cash in, in Microsoft and uh, very few managements can stand having four and a half billion of cash and not doing something uh, unintelligent with it. it uh, uh, so far, it's made sense for us to retain uh, everything we earn, and uh, I think it'll make sense for a while longer, but it may not make sense indefinitely. Let's summarize Buffett's major points. He believes Berkshire can turn each dollar retained into more than a dollar of market value. In the long run, he says this will bring far more value to shareholders. This makes perfect sense and is most simply put by his example of if you are running a small business that generates $100,000 a year. If that money could be reinvested to grow the business and bring more value, then you'd leave it in. Otherwise, you'd take it out. This applies to any business, even a YouTube channel like mine. If I thought I could get more value by buying better equipment, editing software, ads, or hiring someone, then I'd reinvest earnings into that. If not, then I'd take the money out of the business. This principle applies to all businesses, big and small. Buffett says that if he or his successors ever come to the conclusion that they can't create more value from retaining earnings, then Berkshire will destroy distribute the earnings as a dividend. There are many businesses that can't intelligently reinvest all their earnings back into the business. In this case, the logical choice is to distribute these earnings to shareholders. Buffett gives the example of Seize Candy, The Buffalo News, and Coca-Cola as companies where this dividend policy makes sense. So when or under what circumstances would Berkshire start paying a dividend? Many people argue it's been time for a while. As of June 30th, 2020, Berkshire Hathaway is 146.6 billion billion dollars in cash and equivalents on hand. That's a staggering amount. On top of this, the company is an absolute cash cow, only adding to this cash pile. So is it already dividend time? Buffett himself said they'll probably go too long before paying a dividend due to denial or just being stubborn. So is that what's happening now? Like most things, the answer is not so cut and dry. To fully understand this decision, we need to think about the core of Berkshire's business. Berkshire Hathaway is just a holding company. They are in the business of buying businesses. In a way, this model is perfectly positioned for reinvested capital to return value. All you need to do is invest in a business that will return more value than you spend to acquire the ownership. This seems like something that could continue indefinitely. The only potential obstacle I see is scale. Can you become too big that this is no longer practical? Are there not enough opportunities compared to the amount of cash they generate? This is the fine line where retaining earnings creates less value for shareholders than paying out a dividend. It's a very hard question to answer. Berkshire has been cash heavy for a long period of time now. There have been many stretches where it seems like they're not increasing shareholder value by sitting on that cash cushion. However, you never know when an opportunity could strike and Buffett likes to be ready to take advantage of it. For example, in the 2000 
2008 financial crisis, Buffett was able to invest heavily while others were short on cash. He invested over $5 billion into Bank of America and had other substantial investments into companies like Goldman Sachs. This ability to act in times of crisis is something that Buffett values highly, and he would not want to sacrifice this if a too ambitious dividend policy left them empty-handed. Even outside of times of crisis, Buffett likes to act fast and act big when he identifies an opportunity. This is best demonstrated by his more recent investment into Apple. He plowed over $35 billion into Apple stock, which has already delivered terrific returns less than five years later. Berkshire Hathaway does not want to sacrifice its ability to act when large opportunities arise. So as you can see, it's really an imperfect science and difficult to tell when Berkshire Hathaway should pay a dividend. However, Buffett did say the company will eventually reach a point when a dividend would be logical. It's hard to tell whether this will happen as long as Buffett's alive or if it's a decision that will be left to his successors. I have a feeling that shareholder pressure may eventually be the factor that changes their policy. If the cash cushion continues to grow and significant investments are not seen, then pressure may mount for them to change their policy, whether actually correct or not. Let me know if you'd be interested in a full Berkshire Hathaway stock review or other Warren Buffett content. Thank you for watching Dividend Data. I'd greatly appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you follow me on Twitter, link in the description, you can get real-time updates of my buys and dividends coming in. You can support the channel over on Patreon and be a part of making these videos happen. The link is in the description. Please leave a comment below and thank you for watching.